Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark with Mech Tech with another transmission from Keeb World. And today I'm I'm gonna do a little bit something a little bit different. I'm gonna mix it up. If you guys don't know, I'm one of the moderators over at Budget Keebs. And if you don't know what Budget Keebs is, it's a subreddit on Reddit.com. Um one of the most asked questions that we come across is somebody that you know, has spent some time, sometimes a little bit more than others, and you can usually tell by the level of detail they, they provide in the question. But one of the most asked questions is, what keyboard should I get? And, I mean, obviously, <sighs> there's so many out there nowadays. I mean, from ultra budget to budget to gamer to enthusiast to you know mid-grade mid-level I mean it's I can understand how they can be they can feel a little overwhelmed perhaps so what I'm gonna do today is just a quick Google video I'm gonna go through a few kits right today I'm gonna just focus on 65% and they're kind of in that same kind of vicinity because just my opinion I do get, and don't get me wrong, I can work on a 60%, but for people that have primarily worked on a full size or perhaps even a TKL, going all the way to a 60% can be jarring. So I personally recommend newcomers that you know are wanting to enter, enter into the hobby that want to say, you know, oh, I want a 60% on them. Usually like start with at least a 65 then you know get used to that before you go why because of the arrow keys it's one of the biggest things but it's just that so today I'm gonna answer and just kind of stick to the 65 percent dish range um, because the majority of the questions are either what 60 what keyboard should I get what 65 percent keyboard should I get or what 75 percent keyboard so today I'm just going to focus on a 65% board. So in front of me here, I've got one that is quite popular, one that I recommend a lot of people start out with. Now, <clears throat> I was lucky that when I first got these, they were um, very cheap. Um, I got quite a few of them, uh, mostly in the $20 range. Uh, now they did go up. They peaked for a while. They were I've, I saw them on sale for as high as $50. But now they've come back down. They're in the $25, $30 range, which is, I still think, fair. And this is the Tester 68. Now, this is the, the Keep Monkeys version, which they had white labeled. They had made um, CIY Mixes keyboard, and they had it white labeled for them as the KBM 68. But it's the same thing. This is a wireless only keyboard, it is run by uh, two AAA batteries, and you can connect via Bluetooth or through its 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now, this keyboard is, uh, it's got its on and off switch right here. It is easily uh, modifiable, but it doesn't require actually that much out of the box. It does have uh, both padding between the plate and the PCB, as well as a small layer of foam down at the bottom, but it's very easily tuned. It is compatible with all five pin or three pin hot swaps um, sockets I mean switches and as you can see here looks like I got some creams in here but um these are NK creams but it's a decent PCB like I said it is wireless only which is something you have to consider but one of these can be made to sound quite well and they do come in quite a plethora of colors and um, the selections but even out of the box this one has not been modified and it could use it but it doesn't sound awful it actually sounds pretty good out of the box why do I recommend this one it's a very minimal investment and you get a very decent value proposition because this keyboard 
does work well. I wouldn't recommend it if you're going to be doing high-speed gaming. Uh, I, the polling rate, I believe, is 250 hertz. I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it is a great keyboard to start out in if you want to get into the hobby. So if you guys haven't seen, there's tons of videos that get dive even further into the Tester 68. But like I said, I'm just doing a quick overview today. So let's move on to the next one, shall we? Now here we've got probably <clears throat> one of my favorite 65% kits. Um, it was one of the first that I bought specifically for modding. Uh, and it is the uh, LK67, Gamma K LK67. It's known by many names. Um, HF068, KF068, Tom680, TM68, TH68 by EpoMaker. Um, though, I think they did change the software with it. There's issues, but don't quote me on that. Um, it does come, you can choose either a Bluetooth version or a um, wired only mode. Uh, note, if you do intend on modding, this one is definitely modded. That's why you can hear a nice thud when it falls. Um, you do want to be careful if you have the three mod because it has this mode switch. The three mode because it has this mode switch here on the side that if you're, if you don't open the case carefully, uh, that can be broken. I do have a couple of videos on that. You can just search the uh, search my channel or I'll add a link down below. Now this is a 65% with an exploded navigation row and cluster, uh, an arrow cluster with a knob. Uh, the knob can be used for volume and or can be programmed for a number of things, from scrubbing a timeline, uh, you know, whether music, video editing. Um, volume control um, scrolling up and down a page scrolling across uh, workspaces uh, if you can do it with your mouse or your keyboard you can program your um, switch or your uh, encoder to do it so this to me is a really great kit I I know right now this also went up in price and some people are still selling it quite high but I believe that the wired only version if you search on sites um, Chinese sites, AliExpress being good, I think uh, the wired only version is roughly $40 and for wired it's roughly in the $55, $60 range. So this is, like I said, I think it's a great kit. I do know that there was some issues with earlier revisions. I know I have a, this is one I bought a while ago, almost close to, well, no, 10 months ago, close to a year. No, it's been longer than that. But this one, I, I do remember that this is version 3. And one of the latest one I've got is version 4. So they are making revisions of this board. This is a great kit. It's easy to mod. And it actually, I mean, it looks nice. It has those the side lights, the back lights underneath. Um, I added some silicone to the Tempest mod. Sounds really good. Nice and uh, these are running some Akko. Uh, seal silvers now all of these just so that you guys know are going to be north facing leds unless i say otherwise uh, but most switches nowadays it's not really that much of an issue and there are workarounds such as putting a little piece of paper inside of um, uh, your uh, keycap stem uh, or a number of other things anyway sorry to veer off in, in a direction there but i think this is a great kit because it's it, it's easy to mod as long as you know what you're doing and it's uh the battery life is actually quite good on it i know i've had it charged and i've used it um for a while and not had to plug it in for a while uh with the bluetooth it's one of the few keyboards that i've actually used because i've taken with me and i like now now it's actually a little bit heavier but like i said this one's available in many different colorways and i have a couple of um just non non wireless just the the wired version ones much lighter weight but it could still be modded to sound pretty good I'm just adding a little tape mod um, but there's it comes in pink it comes in blue it comes in some translucent colors this is 
as you can tell. It's a keyboard that I'm quite fond of. It's very, it's it's a fun board. It's a great board. I love the design uh, with the 65%, the exploded arrow cluster, and the knob. So that's the LK67. Great 65%. Now, this one you guys might know as the TH66 is actually the Duke Auto VN66. Um, Epo Maker just rebrands it and sells it. Now, this is also a, um, a uh, wireless kit. Um, does have wired capabilities uh, and it does have a uh, dongle, but it doesn't have it. it it's very similar. If you've, if you've seen a TH80 um, or an NJ80, this is basically a slimmed down version of it. It's it's one, yeah, one key less and missing the function row basically. But it's very very similar interior wise, PCB wise. It's very similar to the TH80. But this is a great kit. Um, I've seen it as low as like 45, but it usually ranges in the $60 range or even a little bit higher um, as a bare bone. Uh, it's much more from the company that shall not be named. <laughs> anyway, this is a great kit. This is basically, I want to say like it's it's a it's a bulkier, it's a it's a cloned bulkier version of the one we were just looking at, the LK67. Um, as you can see, they both, I mean, obviously this one is forsaken one of its uh, uh, navigation cluster keys, but the uh, knob is actually down, whereas the knob here is actually going up, making the bezel a little bit thicker. I, I actually, I, I like both designs. I can't say one or the other. Um, the software on both of these, despite being Chinese, does allow you to do some basic remapping. So I can always, you know, map a couple extra keys if, if I might need two keys that are not on the actual physical board. But anyway, this is uh, it's a great kit. It can be made to sound really good with very little effort. It, ha it has, um, like I said, the 2.4. It's also a Bluetooth. I want to say it's Bluetooth 5. Um, it, it does have a pretty good Bluetooth connection. It's another board that I've used very minimally uh, over wired, but it also has uh, a nice knob, which is replaceable. This does come with a metal knob, which is nice. Uh, the knob that I showed you on the first, uh, actually on all the ones that I showed you for, they don't have their original knobs, I've replaced them. Most keyboards that have a knob can be replaced with a guitar potentiator meter, six millimeter D knob. Um, if you guys are looking, uh, if it's the LK67, you've got 20 millimeters total space without the ring in there. You've got about 18, really 17.5 millimeters with that inner ring. And I'm talking about this inner ring right here. So. Sorry to keep going about that, but that's just some information I had on, off the top of my head. Anyway, this one, same thing. You can replace the um, the knob with any 75%. This one is a little bit tighter on there, but it will come off. And this one does have a bit of a collar. So you just got to make sure that there's going to be a fit. Most, most knobs are going to fit just fine. You can see those two little teeth there. That's what basically makes it part of the D knob, and that's where you want to go down on the straight side of it when you go to push it back in and if you want to do it the right way well, let's go there we go all right and that's also clickable uh, if you have it for volume obviously that's mute uh, and it does have uh, two sets of feet so you're gonna have three different angles starting at I believe a three degree angle six degree and a nine or no it's a three five and seven I don't know I, I'd have to check anyway this is a another great kit that's um, very easy to mod this one's been mod modded and it sounds really good it actually sounds pretty good um, stock like the th80 surprisingly so it just popped in some switches and you can't go uh, but tuning the the stabilizers adding a little bit of grease makes a big difference. now this here is a recent entrant into the 65 percent field but it has quickly become quite popular. Now this is a kit 
does not come pre-assembled. It does include a cable of the same color of the case in the box and um, the, all the cases, there's three different colors. This green, a purplish, that's more of a lavender almost, and a black. And they all have this uh, translucency. Um, it look pretty nice when, the, when you plug it up. They light up pretty good and they have a little bit of flex. They are gasket mount, but um, don't let the whole do I have this plugged in? Oh, yeah. Don't let the whole gasket mount thing fool you. Um, yes, gasket mount's important for getting some, like I said, north facing, for getting uniformity and also for more natural of a typing feeling. But um, it's not like if you're typing on you know, a regular top mount, uh, a tray mount keyboard you're gonna be like oh this is so hard I mean it, it it's not truly it takes a tuned ear to realize that you know it's not as uniform you have to really listen to it I mean it's there obviously when we make sound tests but it's not something that I think that you're really going to miss especially if you're getting started and I think a lot of people really are just about it flexing so much to the degree that it's like I've seen some flex and it's like I mean that's like I'm ty typing on a trampoline I don't get me wrong I like feedback I like tactility I like keyboards to to feel good but I'm not expecting it to bounce up and down so anyway this is the gas 67 also from CIY uh, it is a wired only 65% kit like I said it comes you know unassembled um, this is a Windows Mac mode switch. I don't know why they put it where their blocker is. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, I have not modified this one, but though a bit muted, sounds pretty good stock. Uh, this is running right now some Oppo Starfish switches um, and a Nautilus Cherry keycap set. Now this kit, I would recommend for anybody say, okay, I've played with my first RKA 68 or I played with the um, the tester 68 or you know I want to I want to move up but I don't want to spend too much money this kit right now is available for roughly fifty dollars um, and maybe a couple dollars even cheaper than that on uh, most of the um, international sites so honestly I think it's a great deal it's a it, it, for the price you're getting a great keyboard the one thing one complaint I have about this keyboard is that it doesn't have metal standoffs for the screws and the screws are quite soft but as long as you're gentle you, you should be able to open her up a couple times and still be fine but you just have to be real gentle and keep in mind that these screws can strip other than that one caveat I would say that this is really a great entrant keyboard it comes with a polycarbon plate it has that nice 65 percent layout you know because, i mean who uses a right control key honestly um yes i know there's some applications that like it but this this i mean the software is somewhat lacking yes it would be nice if this one had qmk via you guys don't know that's an open source firmware a lot all basically all these keyboards i'm going to be showing you except for one uses their own software so you got to install something different for each one if you want to program it but if you don't want to do that, please take a look at a program called K-Monad, K-M-O-N-A-D. It works on any operating system, and you can program any keyboard to work exactly like you want it to. The only key that you can't program is the function key. Other than that, you can do whatever you want to, as many layers as you want, to your heart's desire. It looks a little daunting at first, but it's super easy, just a config file. Anyway. This is a great kit that I would recommend anybody that's willing. All right, I've bought a pre-built. I have you know, already messed around with one. They want to build one from the ground up because it really doesn't take that long. Uh, let's put it together, and you can go ahead and do the mods while you're at it since it's already open. comes with decent stabilizers. Uh, like I said, it comes with a cord, the USB-C cable that actually matches the color of the case. So it's a damn good value for the price. Uh, I think that it's it's well worth the money and like I said it right now less than 50 bucks now I do know that CIY has got some really cool kits 
planned ahead in in the remaining I mean most of their stuff is going to remain in the budget the ultra budget world so anyway let's move on this one is a kit that comes from uh, KP Republic I believe or KBD fans no KP Republic this is called the BM 65 uh, yeah I know I, I didn't pick the name um, anyway it was a 65% kit you uh, you pick the case uh, you pick the PCB you pick the plate uh, I think for what I built this one for I think it's about $59 uh, that's the plate the PCB and the case I've modded this one sounds pretty good now this one is I mean it is a uh, a tray mount so it's very stiff but again speaking you know of gaskets it's not an unenjoyable experience it's fine I've used this keyboard and it's it's a great keyboard I enjoy using it um, that said you don't have any flex so some people think that you have to have flex and that's just not the case you have to find what works for you if you if you think it feels too hard maybe you will enjoy flex if you think it feels just fine nice and firm well then you'll you'll be fine with the majority of keyboards and I mean tray mounts only you know just recent in the last few years uh, most keyboards have been <laughs> this way so it's not like you're gonna be missing out on something uh, unless you are like I said it's up to everybody. Everybody uses their keyboards differently. Some people, what works for one person may not work for the other. But anyway, this is a kit that comes, like I said, it, uh, it's a very uh, a simple design. I want to say it's a steel plate. I don't know if it's aluminum or steel, uh, but it's a metal plate. And this one is uh, QMK VIA compatible. And right now I'm rocking some AJAZ Kiwis in it. Now it's, again, north facing. Um, but it does have the compatibility for five pin and uh, like I said with a little bit of modding I this one has silicone uh, tempest tape mod and I don't think I did the PE font yeah there's no PE font on here but it's a decent sounding kit um, so if you like a little bit harder you know a little bit of a stiffer experience i'd go with this one if you do want to try out the flex i'd go with the gas 60 from keep monkeys and another one that's actually by uh, as well it's supposed to be qmk but i haven't seen the source files yet but you can program it with via now this it is i mean if you want something flexy i mean look at that usb port this this is about one of the flexiest keyboards i actually own and uh, I mean, I made some keyboards pretty flexy, but this one is, I mean, and I mean, this is stock. This is stock. So um, now this one does have the south face. So it kind of checks off the boxes for a lot of the what um, some people will just say that you have to get uh, you know so that there's no interference so this one is south facing it's a uh, programmable by Avaya it's supposed to be QMK as well but like I said I haven't seen the source files yet and it's not in the uh, in the branch but um, via runs on top of QMK so obviously somebody has a, a source branch somewhere um, it's a uh, it's an acrylic uh, uh, CNC acrylic two-part kit and I like the sound of acrylic stacked acrylic and this kind of acrylic it's it just works really nice um, this this is the uh, <laughs> started talking about the keyboard and I didn't even mention what it is it KBGM 680 Pro from Keep Monkeys. I think they sell it for I want to say sixty-seven or sixty-four dollars. I think it's, in my opinion, it's well worth the price. If you want it flexy and you also enjoy RGB, <laughs> I mean, this is the. Uh, well, there's a one color and it really 
has a really gorgeous uh, shine down, shine through. It's what I like to call an LED cloud um, because of the acrylic. You know, it gives it that foggy type of look. So if you like RGB and you like flux, um, I'd really give this one a shot. I think it's a, it's a great kit. It sounds, I mean, <laughs> I just built it. I just built it and it's a stock. Those uh, Ajaz Peach for stock, I didn't even lube. And I think it sounds pretty damn good. A little bit of an oddball. And not a lot of people are gonna love this one, but I actually like it. Um, it is missing some keys and the software doesn't, isn't really um, the best kind of software. So that said, um, this is the DNA 65. I believe uh, KP Republic sells it for 40 something dollars now. This is stacked acrylic layer. It is gasket mount, but as you can see, there's not much flex to speak of. Um, this is stock as well. I have not done any modifications to it. Acrylic has a really nice sound profile. It just tends to let out deeper tones. Um, but this is just an oddball out there. This is honestly more if you really like you know the look of it um it does have you know some decent rgb just gotta have the right cable it does have the underglow and it just uh it has pretty good rgb this is a north facing um but like i said it's a little bit of a quirky one if you like how it looks, you like the gold accents, um, I liked how it looked. I got it. I got the little brother of it too. It's an ortho linear. It's a DNA 50. But anyway, this is the DNA 65. It's an odd bird, but I thought I should show it. Anyway, I'm moving. I'm sitting here going, hmm. I know I've got another one, and it's the one that I'm actually using on my video workstation right now. Now this is a keycap set that I had done through WASD keyboards. Uh, you can have your own uh, keycap sets done. And uh, this is a gradient. You'll probably notice that one is at, 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 from another set, but we won't tell anyone. This is the Red Dragon Caster K631, I believe. Yes, pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, this is a, now, I got it when they were having a push. They just had released them, and they were all, I want to say, half off. Because I think this one regularly goes for roughly $40, and I think it was like $20, $22, um, or $23, or something like that. So I decided to pick this one up. There was like three of them that were released at the time. And it has, you know, one, one set of feet. Now, this is the first of the Red Dragons <clears throat> that of the hot swap bird dragons that are using the new Otemu CIY style uh, hot swap sockets. So instead of the little round holes that if you're familiar with any of uh, like the EU Su boards or any even the old red dragon boards, they had the round holes and you'd notice that, that you can't you couldn't use certain switches with them. Well this has compatibility for any switch you want to use now and here I have oh these are some I made that's just a a yak a yak with a uh, black stem in it but anyway as you can see you can do five pin in a red dragon and if it would focus see five pin in a red dragon but uh, this keyboard, actually, um, when I first got it, it it was pretty <laughs> it was pretty bad, um, stock out of the box, I must say. But since I paid so little for it, I didn't mind putting a little bit of work into it. Um, it was pretty hollow in there. It is a plastic plate, so I prefer polycarbonate. So once I worked it properly, I mean, I I. Added the uh, neoprene, basically made the, the matrix, the grid on the uh, 
uh, between the PCB and the plate and I added um, the silicone and Tempest tape. And uh, I didn't do the PE foam on this one, but these caps aren't the greatest in the world as far as sound. They're pretty thin. I think they're barely a millimeter. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, if you can find this one on scale, it's a great kit. For a plastic kit, I think it can be made to sound really good. I did a uh, sound test with different caps. I've got a video uh, of this keyboard, and especially with the taller, deeper caps, uh, you can get a really thocky. I mean, it sounds thocky. It sounds really well. So uh, don't dismiss a board because, you know, it's, it's a gaming board. I try to dismiss the company and just look at the product individually. Obviously, the company is important when it comes to, like, support and everything like that. Like, the company that shall not be named. Anyway, now this is the KBM 680. Uh, now, this is what came before the Pro. Um, why is the other one Pro? Because the Flex. Now, this one is gasket mounted, but as you can see, there's not that much Flex to speak of. There is a little bit, but there's not that much. But this is another one of those gasket layered kits. That so yeah, this is the uh, this is another one of those really you know, gorgeous RGB clouds. I, I do like these. I, I I say I don't really care much for RGB if if it's if it's all business, but something like this, which is like all right, it's highlighting it. Yeah, no, that's a, that's kind of a different story. So um, now this one. I have not modded it yet. It, I know it will probably sound much better once it's modded, but uh, I haven't gotten around to it. Now this one, I don't know if they still sell it, but I think it went for $42. Um, I think that's what I got it for. Um, it It is also VIA compatible, and as you can see, it's north facing. So, But even stock, it's not that bad. It just, I could use a little work, but again, just another 65%. And this, like I said, this is the Key Monkey KB KBGM 680. That's just not the pro. So, probably one of the pricier of the budget. Well, this is more budget enthusiasts, but one of the pricier kits that I'm going to be showing you today. Some of you might know it automatically. This is the KBD67 Lite. This one in particular is the R3 or Revision 3 or Round 3 whichever one um, go by this is a really nice kit it comes with the case it comes with even the tools that you need um, it it comes with a cable it's a very complete kit it sells for normally 129 I've seen it as low as 99 but they charge about $30 for shipping because uh, they ship through DHL uh, but this is and it is a gasket mount kit but I mean there's not really much flex to speak of i mean there is some don't get me wrong there is but this is probably going to be one of your more like i said it's more the top end of the scale so the materials are better as you can see they use the metal inserts um, the gaskets the extra materials they give you with it um, it's really you know it's a top of the line kit now are you going to be missing out with it if you, you know, say, decide on getting this one instead of getting that one? Well, honestly, if you only intend to, you know, mod it and shut it and abuse it. Honestly, no. Um, while this one has a a little bit higher of a tone, they, they don't have the same switches in it, mind you. These. Yeah, these are the U4Ts, so you can't really compare. Um, and these are linears, the Aka Starfish. But are you going to miss out on anything if you buy this one instead of that one on a case? That's about it. That's really all you're going to miss. I mean, they both offer flex. I mean, this one is gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. I love uh, that the lines, the curb. I love the looks of this thing. It, it's it's gorgeous. It does have an under pad. And this one doesn't. So, a case, PCB under pad. That's it. But, you know, so this one under $50. This one shipped about $50. You, 
by about three for what you get that for. I originally said 65% ish. I wanted to get into some variance. This is more of a 60% with arrow keys. Now I know the keycap set that I have on it doesn't quite um, give it to you, but basically these are the arrow clusters. So it's a 60% with arrow clusters. So for say somebody that wants to, excuse me, um, get into the, uh, you know, want, wants a 60%, but just can't have that the loss of the arrow keys. Now you're gonna have to have the keycap set that has a one U shift and a one U delete key, or find a key to replace it with like novelties. Uh, but this is the um, the Skyloom, the GK, I think it's the 64, this is 6X. I don't know why it's named like that, but I think it also goes under the GK 64, I believe. Um, there's a several different keyboards that have, they just called 64 key 60% is what they're called, because a regular um, one is 61 key, a regular 60%. So now this kit I've seen on sale for as low as like 30, $35 on Amazon. It's, you know, it's a plastic kit, it's got a steel plate. It's a very basic construction, but can be modded to sound pretty good. Probably a 70%. Um, because it does include an extra row, uh, and this is the Keychron K14. Uh, this is an RGB Bluetooth uh, three-way keyboard. Now, a lot of people like Keychron. I'll be honest, there was a time that I did not have much luck in the past with Keychron, and I was just as likely to get a good one as a bad one. But, I must say that in the last year, their support has improved and so has their products it, i think they finally <laughs> got tired of being called the company that had poor qa and qc and they're actually doing something about it because um out of probably the dozen or so that i've bought not just for myself i, I build kits for friends but out of the dozen or so key crons, uh there was only one of the k series that had the mode switch broken it looked like it had taken a tumble uh, during shipping, so I don't think it was even their fault. Um, other than that, I mean, this one, this is a, this is stock. I mean, this, the stabilizers need some work, but it doesn't sound that bad stock. It has that aluminum frame that actually, this aluminum frame is super easy to paint. I've done them before. Um, you don't even have to sand it. Just put a light coat of primer on it and then go to town and it just takes paint like nobody's business and then cover it up with a clear and it'll look really nice so this is um this is a i just wanted to include this one um 70 percent now here is a another 70 percent this one's going to cost you more in the i think the 80 dollar range for the hot swap now they have different variants you can get them even without the the aluminum frame and they get even cheaper without the hot swap they get even cheaper but this is the uh rk 71 uh, and it's a 70 percent as you can see it has that extra set of keys right there uh this one does have the um has a side light which some people like and it also has magnetic feet Woo! um yep it has 2.4 and i've lost the dongle so yeah you can see the uh, side glow LED and it has um, really nice RGB. This is a keyboard that I have not modded, so this is what it sounds like stock. Sounds like an Akko stock. Anyway, this is a um, it's a pretty good keyboard. I, I got this one from an open box. Um, I, I want to say I got it for twenty-two dollars. So. Um, Anything below 40, I think this this one is a good deal now. Like I said, I brought these out. They're 70%. They're just 65% with a few extra keys. But, I mean, isn't that all of them? Anyway, so, like I said, which one is going to be the right one for you? Uh, that's not something I can say. So, which keyboard is the right one for you? That's not something that I can decide. You're going to have to pick on your own. But I hope that I at least gave you a sample of what's available out there um, in the 65 
percent range like I said it's one of the uh, most asked about I will be doing another one on 75% keyboards um, but if you guys have any questions or comments just shoot them to me down below and I'll do my best <coughs> excuse me to answer them as soon as I can I hope this video was helpful and answered any questions somebody might have had till the next transmission keep calm keyboard on peace and love